Ladies and gentlemen, Smith and Smith. Your job is exciting, the challenge you've got is finding a parking spot. Down. Pardon? What do you want? Oh, I'll have a hot beef sandwich. I want a parking spot, Ace. How long are you gonna be? I don't know. More than two weeks? No. Less than 10 minutes? I'll be about an hour. You better need your ownership, proof of insurance. <laughs> what? My boss makes the rules. Someone hired you? Okay, here you go. What's your license number? I have no idea. I gotta have it. Oh, for crying out loud. Try the back doors. I got children's safety locks on them. That's pretty stupid. Thanks for your help. I gotta have that license number. Oh. That'll be a $25 deposit. $25? What am I renting an apartment here? It's not me. Oh, I know, I know. It's your boss. <laughs> I can't believe there's unemployment in this country. They got all the idiots working. 25. There you go. Okay, you want to just pull forward a couple feet here? Yeah. Just uh Leave the keys in it. Yeah. Thanks. Hey. Hello, police? Yeah, yeah, my car's just been stolen. Yeah, white station wagon. I should know the license number. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't locked. No, the keys were in it. Yeah. No, I, I gave the thief the ownership and the proof of insurance. Yeah. She has about, uh, well, at least $25 on her. 
Yes, it was a girl. Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. My car was stolen by a girl. Yes, yes. No, she didn't have a gun. She had a parking lot. What do you mean you can't arrest a parking lot attendant? I know you don't make the rules. But isn't robbery still a crime? What sign? I don't see any sign. Oh, that sign. Thank you. Next! slogan was, leave the parking to us. The price of parking has never been fair. It's based on whatever the traffic will bear. We could insist they get rid of those fools if we only knew who makes the rules. I said, don't let it get you down. Don't let it get you down. You Hey, my name's Jim Bob Johnson, originally from the southern United States, but I'm living up here in Canada now. <laughs> Friends, I'm a simple man. I like the simple pleasures in life, such as smoking cigarettes. That's what I said, smoking cigarettes. And I'm getting just a tad peeved with all the flack I'm taking because I do enjoy smoking cigarettes. Now, I ain't proud of it. But everybody's got something they ain't proud of, and if that's the worst thing I do, it ain't gonna make me a bad person. <laughs> I know they say smoking increases your chances of getting certain diseases, and I believe that's true. But there are some people who get them diseases who never smoked a day in their lives. You know what I'd do if I was them? I'd start smoking. <laughs> There'd be nothing to worry about. And people tell me smoking ruins your health, takes away your wind. Well, what's so good about having a lot of wind? <laughs> Anyhow, that's a load of hogwash. You know that hockey player Guy Lafleur? He smokes, and Joe Clark don't. Which one would you bet on to run five miles? <laughs> In fact, I don't think Joe Clark should run at all. But everybody wants you to think that non-smokers is better than smokers. Just ain't true. To me, non-smokers is just a bunch of folks looking for something to do with their hands. <laughs> you got a guy who works here at the dump. Smoked for 20 years and then just quit cold turkey. What kind of loyalty is that? Could you trust a man that would do something for 20 years and then all of a sudden never do it again? I bet it's made his wife nervous. <laughs> See, that never happened with a real smoker. We ain't quitters. <laughs> they can raise the price. They can put up the no smoking signs. They can take the cigarette commercials off the TV and the radio. We're gonna keep buying them. <laughs> but they took them health food commercials off the TV and the radio. How much you think they'd sell? The square root of zip, that's how much. <laughs> Because people who eat health food don't have what it takes to be a smoker. <laughs> Smokers are special people. And we deserve a little more consideration. <laughs> I was in the elevator the other day with a feller and he asked me to put out my cigarette. And this guy's breath had knocked a buzzard off a fish barrel. <laughs> I said, who is polluting who here? <laughs> At least with a smoker you can see their breath and get out of the way. Well, I believe I've made my point, and I do hope that you'll think about it. And now, if you excuse me, 
I'm going to grab me smoke. <coughs> I'll, I'll say it. have a letter here from good old T.O. Good old T.O. Yeah. Smith and Smith, I was an avid fan of the Smothers Brothers TV show and was very disappointed when the censors forced it off the air. Your humor is reminiscent, hard one for me, of the Smothers. Do you have any censorship problems? Yes. Kevin, Kevin Jackson, Toronto. Kevin, we do have a censorship problem. Uh, we are never censored. And I think as a result, uh, our show suffers for it. <laughs> I think that if, if, if we were not allowed to say anything that we wanted to, that we would be forced uh, to be more entertaining. <laughs> but with having just a completely wide open thing, it's, it's the producer of the show, Larry Schneer. Watch for him in the credits. <laughs> he has no minimum level. <laughs> And uh, it encourages you to do things with your body that you would never think of doing otherwise. Why are you answering like this? Now, people take the time to write... You know, a lot of people have never written to a television show, right? I mean, you just don't think, well, gee, I have half an hour. I think I'll dash off a letter to Smith & Smith. I mean, this guy took the time, the yeah. effort, and then you just, you know, say something, some dumb answer. <laughs> what have you to say for yourself? Well... He's just writing about censorship. I wish he'd just kiss off. Um, <laughs> I was thinking that if there was any other questions, I will force Steve to answer them, you know, seriously or semi-seriously. I'm just so. kidding, Kevin, and thank you for writing the letter. Please go ahead and write. To your station. <laughs> we wish to pay tribute to the ancient art of applied matrimony. A chance to take a purely speculative, behind-the-scenes look at the married life of famous people. <laughs> and whom, pray tell, is our lucky couple this week, Meringue? Our lucky couple this week, Steve, is Mr. and Mrs. Sergeant Preston. Mr. and Mrs. Sergeant Sargi Preston. <laughs> I'm such a schmo Chief, I keep it brief. When can we come home? My numbing toes, her plumbing's froze. She doesn't ever go anywhere. We don't get down or fool around.
birds and birds Just cause my fur's nicer than hers And I'm asked out more often That's where you work, you stupid jerk It's nothing to be proud of It's kind of fun in the midnight sun When can we come home? Remember when we lived back in town The warmest, happiest couple around I walked the beat near the bars downtown Hold them here That's how it began Oh, now. <laughs> More eggs wardrobe supplied by Hollies. Hair by David Church Associates. Dr. Livingston and I get my living done deep in the dark of the jungle Where I built my mission there was crocodiles fishing and the lions can keep a man humble You'll hear the python hissing and your best friend's missing You go sneaky on your own It's all jungle cries and teetsy flies But I call it home They call I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy Getting my assignment done An American paper Sent me on this paper To find Dr. Livingston I've seen the Ganges River Seen a monkey's liver Seen bones in people's hair I haven't found the place Of the man I trace But I think that's him there Oh, Mr. Stan Reason whatever brings you to my living room I look such a mess, I didn't even shave If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked the slave Mr. Stanley, I'm so surprised to see you <laughs> What's the news? Well, this is quite a shocker to find you, doctor A challenge I thought I would fail I came to explain that the world hasn't changed And also, I brought you your mail They were unable to reach you So I've come here to greet you Cause you never answer your phone Now you've been restationed back in civilization So please come home No, thank you, Stanley You presume too much It's much nicer to be out of touch Back in England, I'm just a dope Over here, I'm the great white hope No, thank you, Stanley I won't be leaving with you So tell me, doctor Is there room enough here for two? Would you like to stay? You sure would It's a jungle back there Very clever How are you now? Well, not great or I wouldn't be here. Yeah, right. So what are they going to do with you, dear? Pump you full of dope or put you under the knife? I'm having my gallbladder out this afternoon. Gallbladder? Well, my heavens, there's no point in me washing this floor, is there? 
and I sincerely hope they don't expect me to clean out the operating room. Well, I don't know. Why don't you go somewhere and ask somebody? Yeah, right. So they're whipping out your gallbladder. I can't believe they're gonna try another one. Huh. Another one? Yeah, right. They've done a couple of dozen of those in the last few years. And how did they turn out? Oh, not too bad. Most of the survivors are up and around by now. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I should reconsider. Yeah, right. But at least by now they know what a gallbladder looks like. That first bunch, they were taking all kinds of things out of people. You should have seen the stuff we were throwing in the garbage. <laughs> Maybe I'll just check myself out of here and, you know, I, I think it could wait a few more weeks. Yeah, right. Who's scheduled to do the surgery? Dr. Thornton. Yeah, right. Shaky Thornton. Shaky? Yeah, right. It's just a nickname. Sometimes we call him the singer. Dr. Thornton's a singer? No, but his stitches are always zigzag. Uh, you know, I think, really... My gallbladder could wait a few more weeks. Yeah, right. Just make sure they give you enough anesthetic, okay? A lot of the patients have been waking up in the middle of the operation. Oh, no. Yeah, right. And it's pretty hard for the doctor, you know, to keep working, and the guy's just screaming as long as I can. Okay, uh, that does it. I'm, huh? I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Oh. And I think my gallbladder could wait a couple more weeks, don't you? I yeah, think so. Well, maybe you could come back, you know, next month and have it done then. Yeah, right. Hello, switchboard? Yes, would you tell Dr. Thornton and Nurse Monroe that there's an empty bed in room 207? Yeah, right. Everybody.